Good morning, everybody. This is Danny back from Deep South Homestead. We're out here in uh, the greenhouse today. Guys, we got our onions in from Dixondale. Uh, we have our own planted, but they're a little bit behind because we got a late start on them. Uh, so we went ahead and ordered from Dixondale the Texas Legend. Uh, that is a short day variety for down here in the south. Make sure when you order your onions you get the right length of day variety or you will not have a big bulb at all. So guys, what we're going to do is this year we're going to be planting the onions in the greenhouse. We usually plant them outside, but how will we know if we don't plant in the greenhouse one year? So we're going to plant some in this greenhouse. We're going to plant some in the other greenhouse. We're going to see if the black shade cloth versus the white shade cloth makes a difference about onion bulb size and everything like that. Now, I got a little small spot right here left in mine. It's probably four foot by two foot. I'm going to stick me some in here and then we're going to move over to the other greenhouse and we're going to be putting them in it. But now here, uh, when you plant these little onions, don't bury these things deep in the ground. I'm just, okay, you don't want to plant the onion over maybe a half an inch deep at the most. If you plant it too deep, you won't have a bulb. The key is, as this thing begins to grow, is to pull dirt away from it, not to add dirt to it. Now I'm going to put mine about ever six, eight inches apart and I'm just barely going to stick them in the ground like that a little bit because that's really all that's needed. And we're just going to go down through here and do that. Not much required to it. And I dampen my soil ahead of time because I feel like that a lot of times that really helps to start off with damp soil. It helps to, to be able to put some good compaction around the roots of the of the onion there. Now we're going to be able to, you can plant a lot of onions in a small area if you really intensely take care of it. There's one thing at Deep South we love. We love us some onions now. This ground's already been uh, amended. We already have our fertilizers in here and stuff, so we're not worried about that. You want loose dirt for onions. You don't want compacted dirt. All right, guys, we got 26 uh, onions planted in this area here. I know they're not really compatible with strawberries, but um, the strawberries is right at the very end, and I'm not really that concerned about it because we need onions right now. And the strawberries will probably be transplanted at some point. All right, guys, we moved over to the other side of the greenhouse. This is where we planted our garlic the other day, our elephant garlic. Now, the elephant garlic will be here permanently. The, uh, the bulb onions will come out this spring, so we're not worried about that. We originally was going to plant something down through here that the garlic would be an insect deterrent, but we're going to turn this, I think, right now into an allium bed. Now, we have potatoes next to it here, and alliums and potatoes do not go together. But we're not planting them amongst them. We're planting them at the end of the row. And we will see if it does anything right here to the very ends of either one of these. We'll know for sure at that point. We're just going off of information that we've, uh, we've always heard. Never hurts to experiment a little bit. And to try and see what happens. So we're going to continue to go down through here. And we're going to double row these. Because we're about intense planting in the greenhouse. And see if we can... Uh, we're going to see if we can't get some of these things up and going in this greenhouse before we move over to the next one. Because we've got plenty here. We, it ain't like we're going to run out. Alright guys, we've moved over to the other greenhouse. Um, the English peas are doing wonderful here. I mean, you can see the little peas that's already forming on them here. Looks like we're, uh, you know, looks like they're going to be okay. Um, I've pull around through here and look. I mean, I got peas everywhere. The blooms are starting to come on them. Now, I will say this. Onions and peas are not supposed to go together. They say, according to what I read, that the onions will stunt the growth of the peas. Well, guys, I have found so much stuff I've read to be inaccurate that the only way I'm going to know for sure is if I just go ahead and plant these in here. Um... I've got 
60 something planted in over here right almost 70 planted in the other greenhouse so I'm going to go ahead and take one bed here and I'm going to try the onions down with this bed and I'm just going to see if it stuns them then I will say what I read online is true um, I don't take everything I read online as the gospel I have to experiment with it I have to try it I have to prove it in order for me to be satisfied with it so we're going to plant these and they're out away from them and guys the the English peas uh, green bees whatever y'all call them uh, different people call them different things from different places uh, they won't last probably a month in here or maybe a little more uh, unless they like the other greenhouse unless it just magically just keeps growing and producing uh, so by the time these get up a little size to them these should be ready to come out of here unless by some miraculous reason these things just keep going and producing uh, but then if, if that's the case then it's a myth about onions and peas not working together so follow along with us on this experiment and let's just see how it works um, we're going to see if that's actually true or not all right guys we've moved over to the other greenhouse um, the English peas are doing wonderful here I mean you can see the little peas that's already forming on them here looks like we're uh, you know looks like they're going to be okay um, I pull around through here and look I mean I got peas everywhere the blooms are starting to come on them now I will say this onions and peas are not supposed to go together they say according to what I read that the onions will stunt the growth of the peas well guys I have found so much stuff I've read to be inaccurate that the only way I'm going to know for sure is if I just go ahead and plant these in here um, I've got 60 something planted in over here right almost 70 planted in the other greenhouse so I'm going to go ahead and take one bed here and I'm going to try the onions down with this bed and I'm just going to see if it stuns them then I will say what I read online is true um, I don't take everything I read online as the gospel I have to experiment with it I have to try it I have to prove it in order for me to be satisfied with it so we're going to plant these and they're out away from them and guys the the English peas uh, green bees whatever y'all call them uh, different people call them different things from different places uh, they won't last probably a month in here or maybe a little more uh, unless they like the other greenhouse unless it just magically just keeps growing and producing uh, so by the time these get up a little size to them these should be ready to come out of here unless by some miraculous reason these things just keep going and producing uh, but then if, if that's the case then it's a myth about onions and peas not working together so follow along with us on this experiment and let's just see how it works um, we're going to see if that's actually true or not Okay, Wanda's showing you the green beans over on the other side of her greenhouse here. Uh, one of them is the contender, and the other one I think is it's a blue lake, is what you said. Yeah, so they're loading up, and look up in them plants up in there, though. I'm looking from over here. I see some green beans that look nice. Look up there. Oh, boy. I know what that means. We're about to have some green beans to eat fresh at Thanksgiving. Uh, I think you gotta pick uh, snap beans, don't you? Yeah, look at this. Look at that. Oh my word. This is it. This is the day before Thanksgiving. Totally amazing. Look at this. Lots and lots of yellow wax beans. This is I'm, the Cherokee now. The Cherokee yellow wax beans. And y'all, I'm going to be making uh, green bean casserole with fresh. Well, we'd like to rephrase it. I think you'll be making yellow bean casserole. 
Oh, well, I'm going to be making yellow bean casserole <laughs> for Thanksgiving with fresh yellow wax beans. The Cherokee yellow wax beans. I'm just amazed. Look at this. They're everywhere in there. Lots and lots of them ready. Oh my goodness. I see them all up yonder. I just got to pick beans. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Them things must be eight inches long. I mean, long as my hand. Look at that. They may be longer than eight inches. Them things might be ten inches long. And look how many I've done picked. Look at that. Almost half a bucket. And look in the plant here. Look Open in there. it. Look in there. I mean, look at this. Look at I'm the beauty. Only picking and the she's only picking the really big ones. ones. I'm leaving a lot of little ones for later. But look at that. I mean, I love these beans. Oh, I am in love I'll with the you. yellow beans. And y'all, this is amazing. Wow. I'm about to wind it down. I'm almost to the end of them. We're about to the end, but look right here. <laughs> look Isn't at that, that amazing? And even with the, the, um, What'd you call them? The yellow tail, yellow the swallowtail butterfly. Swallowtails. They've eaten my leaves, awful. <laughs> but I'm still getting beans. You gotta have plants to have beans, though. Yeah. This ain't them, no place for the swallowtails. I mean, even though they got in here, they love the beans. Some on the back side over here. I see. Look at that. Good Lord, have mercy. I mean, <laughs> this is Guys, awesome. Wind's blowing, it's cool in here. Feels nice. Look hanging up under the bottom right here. And I picked them leaves up. Look at the the leaves keep getting in my way here. Look at that. I think that one. Look at that one. No, that's two. That's two. One of them there's oh it was eight to ten inches long. Good lord. They're Big old long. beans. Look laying off over here. This and here's laying off down in the dirt there. And that's I mean, probably all of those. Don't you look at the size. I got big old fingers. They're as big as my fingers. I know. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Look how long. Straight. Not all whacked up. I mean, beautiful. And look at this, y'all. Look at that. This is, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And we're going to have a yellow bean casserole instead, <laughs> yeah, of, instead green of a green bean, bean it's going to be a yellow, yellow bean, bean one. Casserole. Amazing. And the taste is just phenomenal. Daddy just walks by, put some on the cabinet the other day and ate several of them. They're just awesome. And yesterday I picked uh, a few, probably about what, maybe yeah. this many. I don't even know if you picked that many yesterday. About that many. Did some bell peppers in some um bacon. Fresh, fresh peppers out of the greenhouse. Yeah, out of Danny's greenhouse. Some fresh peppers. Uh, it was uh, the roaster peppers and I sauteed these things down and they were amazing and we still got This many today. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. That's enough there to eat several meals. I think so Look at that. Mm. So guys, let me tell you something growing in a greenhouse Is definitely where it's at uh, Who would have I, thought in November that we would have English peas with little peas on them, like here we've got. Yeah, we've got peas blooms coming. and peas. I got to come in here with the liquid phosphorus and dump it to it. Uh, I do that whenever they. I start pushing them now. Now's the time to start pushing them. Now they produce their own nitrogen, but things like phosphorus and stuff like that, they need that. Uh, and the color is a little lighter than what I would like on the leaves. I mean, you can see here, that's a little lighter color than uh, than what I would like to see a leaf. But you know what? I'm not going to complain, guys. And we had a few weeds. I mean... Yeah, but weeding this <laughs> is no comparison to weeding a garden. No. I mean, there's not hardly any weeds in this. It's just... I mean, this is fantastic. Amazing. We love it. We love it. I mean, I'm telling you this. I mean, you can go along here. I mean, you just pull up a little weeds. or just a few here and there. You know, I mean... 
Look at look at that right there. You would have never had just that in an outside garden. Okay, look, 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 look. I just found it. My first squash. This is a yellow uh, straight neck squash, I believe. Y'all, if I have squash in this greenhouse over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be so excited. Isn't that awesome? And look up here. Tomatoes already on this tomato plant. There's one, two, three, four, four big ones and three or four small ones down there. Two there. One of them's taking a little bit of color, so it's been there. And there's one behind it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's one back in there. Right here, several in there. Back there. Y'all, this tomato plant here is doing awesome, too. Well, guys, uh, I don't know what I could say. I don't know what I could do that would encourage you any more to get a high tunnel, a greenhouse. Uh, Grower Solutions has got the Black Friday sale coming up. Uh, go check it out. Uh, use our promo code Deep South. We don't make anything on it, but we made the deal with them for you guys. And they've got so many specials going on. They've got this new tube and bender machine come in now. They're going to be able to do a lot more custom work than what they used to. They have hobby greenhouses. You don't have to get them this big. You can buy the, the, the 8 by 12s or 10 by 16s and stuff like that. And guys, I don't, I don't know what else I could say. I mean, we're trying to show you the proof that greenhouses are worth it. You may have to spend a little money up front, but I think that the return in the long run is well worth it to have fresh fruit and fresh vegetables year-round. I mean, this is the day before Thanksgiving, and we are picking Cherokee yellow wax beans. I mean, who would have thought that that was possible at Thanksgiving. Now, I encourage you to stick with us because I'm not sure what we're going to be doing at Christmas. You know, I mean, hopefully by Christmas these will all be loaded up with, with uh, peas and, and these may still be blooming. I don't know. Uh, this is our first year experimenting in the greenhouse with this type of stuff. I'm hoping and praying that they keep producing because I'm sitting here looking at little tiny beans and blooms still all over these. The green ones are just now coming on. The potatoes in here, I mean, how cool would it be to be robbing new potatoes from our potato plants and English peas at the same time at Christmas? Have you ever done that? We haven't. I think it... I, I think it's quite possible that we might be able to do it. And if we can, guys, I don't care what it costs. To me, it's worth it. You know, just, just to be able to enjoy fresh food, fresh vegetables, at the touch of a fingertip. Now, does it take work? Yes, it takes work. I mean, we have to, we have to come out here. This doesn't just magically happen. I mean, it has to be nourished it's just like children when you raise them. They've got to be nourished. They've got to be fed. They've got to be cared for. They've got to be cleaned. Got, there's all Plants have to be done the same thing, too. And they've got to be kept from the elements. And with the, with the world we're living in today, Ms. Wanda's right. They've got to be kept from the elements, just like a child. If you don't prevent them from... It, from some of the wickedness in this world, they'll turn out to be just like the world. These plants, we put them in a controlled environment in here, and guys, they don't get the harshness that the plants outside do. And the fact that they're producing as well as they are proves that it works. So go check out Grower Solutions this Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And guys, so it's going to go till Cyber Monday, and... Guys, if there's any way possible you can make it happen, I think you should make it happen because it might very well be what keeps you going through the future. And a lot of people up north go, well, we can't do it up north because it's too cold. 
I got friends in Illinois right now that have greenhouses up there and they grow all year long in theirs. So it's all about figuring out how to do it. And that's what we're doing here at Deep South Homestead. We're just figuring out how to do it. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.